All right, guys, I'm going to do a quick video over using Move It for ROS. And to begin, we need to get a URDF um, model or file. So you can, they're a little hard to find, but if you just type in some robot name and then URDF, uh, you can typically find something on GitHub. Here I see URDF, um, and I see it's got a couple models. I found that they don't always work, so you just kind of got to peck around and find what you're looking for. So anyways, uh, your first step would probably be to uh, just clone this, so get clone and then this URL. And I've already done that, so let's go take a look at where that is, just so we know it's not that. Okay. So I actually put mine in my catkin, which isn't necessary but I'm just keeping everything here. And this is what it looks like. So here's my URDF. So we need that file path. So what we need to do is open up the move it setup. So I'm gonna ROS launch, and then it's move it underscore set up assistant, set up assistant dot launch. Here it is. Okay, so we're going to create a new Move It configuration. I'm gonna browse. And here it is. I'm gonna pick the 1600 model. And there we see it. If you don't see anything in this box after you click load, um, that means you have some sort of an issue. So first step is, well, we're just going to go through these tabs from top to bottom. So first one, self-collision, all you got to do is generate a default collision matrix, um, then we'll set up virtual joints. So this, if you just want the robot arm, you don't need anything here but I actually want this robot arm to be on a mobile robot. Um, obviously this isn't an ideal arm to do that with, but I'm just picking a random arm that I happen to have on my computer. So anyways, just doing it out of theory. So virtual joint and then child link and parrot frame. So child link says which link do I want to be attached? Well, it's going to be the base link, which is this bottom guy. And then what do I want to attach it to? Um, uh, actually, no. Actually, no. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach link one, which is this link, this one here that rotates in the Z direction. Um, and I'm going to attach that to base link. So this is a little confusing, but this base link is actually going to be my uh, mobile robot. So base link is commonly used for that. And when I do this, it'll get rid of this base link that will, I guess, kind of form into one. So what type of joint do I want? Um, I actually want a fixed joint, so I want the robot base to be fixed to the mobile robot base. Um, there's two other options, floating, which you could use for quadcopters, and then planar, if you want to build the robot entirely and move it, uh, but that can only handle holonomic robots, uh, which basically is just robots with mechanism wheels, meaning um, has three, deg you know, three degrees of freedom. It can rotate, go forward, and go sideways. Uh, in our case, I'm going to be using a non-holonomic robot, which has two degrees of freedom, forward and rotation. It's a, just a differential. It's actually a skid steer robot, which essentially is a differential steer robot. Anyways, I, I want it to be fixed. Um, planning group. Okay, so this is where, this is for the kinematics. Um, just gonna make an arm. Pick a solver. Uh, I'm just using this generic one here. 
then add my joints. So see, notice how I don't have base link anymore and joint one's my first link here. Well, my first joint. These are the joints that make up my robot. And this is a tool, so I'm not gonna include it. Save. Okay, and I'm gonna make one more. It's going to be the grouping tool. Okay, I'm doing this because if you don't put it in, then it'll yell at you and it won't let you finish. So even though I don't have a gripper, I've got to say that I have a gripper. And that's just kind of part of the kinematics. It needs a end defector. So to check your work, um, well, obviously, you can, this is for adding poses, but this, I don't add poses. I just check my work with this. If you see that all your joints, joints are, uh, you can actuate them, then that means you've done done it correct so far. Um, and then on the gripping tool, I don't have one, nothing to actuate, there's no joint there. So that was just to check. So nothing needs to happen there. End defector. So this, again, I don't have per se an end defector, but you have to put something. And then parent link, so basically, what does the tooling attach to? In my case, we're gonna say link six, uh, and it you can leave parent group blank. Um, unless it throws an error that you need one. No passive joints, all my joints are actuated. Then I'm going to pick a place to put this. I've already got a series of these, so I'm just gonna next in line, uh, move it, ABB, mobile, five. So yeah, I know it's kind of silly, oops, some sort of bug where it doesn't, or I, you gotta click in the window to get your file to stay. It's probably not a bug, just me. Mobile, package and that works so exit if it doesn't work then typically it'll throw an error that is going to be informative all right so again I said earlier we are going to be operating on a mobile robot so the mobile robot is completely up to you um, I'm going to be using a pioneer Uh, there we go. Okay, so the idea is as long as you have a robot that you can input command velocity um, and then get out odometry, then that robot's going to work for you. In this case, I have a Pioneer set up in Gazebo, and again, you don't need to do anything fancy with Gazebo. You don't need to do anything with Gazebo. Uh, it could be just any simulator or it could be a real robot or you could just send a command from a command window. Anyways, I'm just going to let this guy spin so that I, I know that it's going to be printing a changing odometry so that I can tell when my robot arm is moving. So we'll put him away. Open up a new terminal and then now we're going to start move it. So I'm going to say Ross launch and then the name my file, so move, what I call it, move it, uh, ABB, mobile D5, and then we're going to run the demo. Okay, my tab's not working, meaning I have, maybe I selected the wrong one. Move it, ABB mobile V, oh, okay. It's not V5, oops. Five, and then demo. There we go. Okay, so this isn't going to be too beautiful. The reason is, oops, okay. Sometimes my RVIS crashes. It's not gonna be too beautiful because my robot that you just saw in gazebo uh, 
uh, I'm, not, not, I'm having some trouble getting that to appear in this window. So we're just going to have a robot kind of floating and riding around in space, but we know that it's actually sitting on the robot, or the mobile robot. So there's this bug. Here I go calling everything bug, but this one seems like a bug. That is coming in large, the uh, little controller there. So I'm going to tune that down. This is on zero, but if I put it on 0 0.2, I'll take care of it. So this is kind of what typically happens when you uh, use move it. You kind of get this arm and pull it around. So this is just kind of forward kinematics going anywhere, and then inverse kinematics to travel in a particular Cartesian direction or any generalized coordinate. So a couple things to realize. So planning group determines, oh boy, battery's low. Uh, planning group determines what you can uh, manipulate. So if I had a gripper on here, I could select this and then I'd be able to manipulate my gripper. So I don't, so who cares? Uh, and then planning. So you have different type of motion planner, planners. Um, honestly, I'm not familiar with any of these, uh, but I kind of understand the concept. And then I've read that this is kind of the one to go to. So RRT, connect K, config default. And I don't know how accurate that is, but again, that's what I read. So here we can select um, a beginning state and a final state. So final state will be random valid. So my initial state is this solid orange and then this transparent orange is my final state. I plan, oh, I had a bad word, sorry. But see, it's just planning a path and showing you what that path looks like. You can stop that by pushing reset. So next thing I'm going to show you is how to control this with a joystick, so Xbox controller. Um, the only thing you need to do in the Move It configuration is select this. This is allow external communication at least I assume that's what that stands for. So now I can have an external import, uh, input. But I'm not done. I actually have to launch something. So Ross launch. And then this is automatically created. Move it. And we said it was ABB mobile 5. And now this time, I don't exactly remember, so let me go look. So again, this is just automatically created when you use move it, and you get a joystick control. So I see it right here, joystick control. <laughs> so joy, I should probably get it. I could have figured that out. Okay, so let's push enter. And if I don't see any errors, then that's great. Um, earlier I was getting some errors with it not liking the parent link. But anyways. So I've got my Xbox controller here. I know you can't see, but I can, this is my uh, left analog stick. And then my bumpers, I can control the Z axis here. And again, this is, so this is inverse kinematics. I'm constraining it. Oh, let me get my chart. So if you've ever done kinematics, we have Inverse kinematics is much more of a pain. That's why you rarely see robots of six degrees of freedom because the kinematics becomes very difficult. Uh, here I'm pivoting around a point. Uh, see there's, I can't really tell. Maybe that's pitch or something. Anyway, so that's that. And then we were going to control this on a mobile base. Well, actually, that's already done. See it's on the platform, which you can't see. Um, all I got to do, I'm going to go to my frame, my reference frame. So what do I want to reference as my fixed frame? And honestly, I don't super duper remember. So odometry, that kind of makes sense. So now my arm is actually traveling around with my robot. That's pretty great. Um, so I stop it. 
turn it. So that's pretty slick, I think. So let me do that and see if I can control it with the joystick still. And we'll see there. Um, I'm not real sure why it's being so jumpy, but I guess I can't complain. It is quite a bit to ask. So I think that's all I have. Thanks for watching.